American architecture schools were not progressive in the years before the Second World War. And indeed, both Mies van der Rohe and uh, Walter Gropius landed in the United States because they were courted by schools of architecture who wanted to refine the way that they trained architects so that there could be a responsible, viable modernism that took advantage of the ambient technologies and that were very consciously looking forward to the kind of changes that the post-war period would bring. Uh, it's very interesting, if you read Walter Gropius's writings of the late 40s and the early 50s, and he did write quite a bit for the American journals, he addressed the matter of how one ought to be training architects for the post-war climate. He was very conscious about hands-on training, he was very conscious about architects being able to solve new design problems practically and economically. I know we make much contemporaneously of the idea of design build and sending our students out uh, to vibrate their own concrete and weld their own steel. It's not such a new idea. Gropius was thinking of that uh, in keeping with his belief that uh, an architect ought to know her materials. The program that Gropius created uh, at the Graduate School of Design in Harvard was a direct and potent evolution of the principles that he had taught at the Bauhaus. Mises' um, work at IIT was a pedagogy that was wholly and completely 150% Miesian. Um, Cornell in the 1950s uh, was known as uh, the school that followed most closely to the tenets of Le Corbusier. So there, there was um, a very, very strong genealogy of Euromodernism embedded in schools of architecture in the United States in the 1950s. Uh, something very new, something very much about the post-war period. 